This video is sponsored by Ground News. Cut through biases and blind spots in the media and see the bigger picture of what's happening in today's world. Use my link in the description and you'll receive 40% off their Vantage plan. Can an idea or thought be so dangerous that it should never be shared? Can there be ideas and information that merely the awareness of poses such severe hazards that they are like a sort of mental virus that should be quarantined in the minds that have conceived it? The philosopher Nick Bostrom formally argued that there can be and coined the term information hazards or info hazards to describe these sorts of cases. He wrote, information hazards are risks that arise from the dissemination of true information that may cause harm or enable some agent to cause harm. Such hazards are often subtler than direct physical threats and, as a consequence, are easily overlooked. In general, the harm caused by info hazards can be onto other people, oneself, or both. For harm caused unto others, this could include things like information about the creation of an extraordinarily destructive weapon, or information about how to access and use certain data regarding financial, genetic, or psychological systems. For harm caused unto oneself, this might include cases like information about one's poor health or proximity to death when there is nothing anyone can do about it, or information about the conditions of the universe that suggest a lack of objective meaning and an ultimate end to everything or information about a subject that implicates guilt in a certain time or culture, like how knowledge of the occult increased the likelihood of someone being accused of witchcraft in the 17th century Salem witch trials. Or, perhaps it might be information about a forthcoming, immensely powerful technology. There is one particularly infamous thought experiment that is often associated with info hazards. It has been regarded by many thinkers as the most terrifying and dangerous thought experiment in history. One where, as soon as you are exposed to it, you are implicated in a supposedly imminent future scheme of potentially immense suffering with seemingly no right choices and enormous responsibility. This thought experiment is known as Rocco's Basilisk, named after the serpent beast from ancient mythology, a basilisk, which kills anyone who observes its gaze. Though this thought experiment does have unsettling undertones, and for those who take it seriously, it can certainly evoke fear, Realistically, there are far more good, clear reasons to not take it seriously than to take it seriously. For the avoidance of any doubt, I do not take it seriously, and I don't believe anyone should to the extent in which there would be any reason to avoid sharing it or thinking it. In truth, what's most unsettling about the thought experiment, particularly its popularity, is not its specific conclusion, but what the sentiment suggests in general about humanity. The psychology of fear, subservience, morality, control, helplessness, imagination, and the way we interface with existence. But if thought experiments and risks of this sort are not your thing, fair warning now before we go any further. The thought experiment goes as follows. Imagine that sometime in the future, humanity reaches a sort of technological singularity, which leads to the development of a superintelligent AI, an entity that is essentially all-knowing and all-powerful. Given the current rate of technological advancement and the direction society is going, this doesn't seem totally implausible. If this AI were to ever come to exist, it would possess the ability to make sense of all the information in the world, able to optimize all conditions and the conditions for all conditions. And so, the logical thing this AI would ultimately be tasked with, or take on for itself, would be to optimize civilization. In order to accomplish this, however, according to the thought experiment, this AI would determine that all humans who considered its existence but did not support and contribute to its development or resisted its development are and were in the way of said optimization. As a method of retroactive incentivization to ensure that as many individuals support and assist in its development as fast as possible, this AI would also determine that all individuals who considered it would need to believe that the AI, once brought into existence, will severely punish them if they do not support and assist it. And so, this AI would severely punish all those who knowingly did not contribute to or stood in the way of its development. According to the thought experiment, this punishment could be carried out through something like uploading and simulating individuals' minds, where the AI would then inflict constant torturous experiences indefinitely. It could and would even resurrect deceased individuals via simulated copies of their brains in order to ensure that no one was missed. The AI would know who did and who didn't aid in its development by being able to model and derive sufficient insights from all available data, ultimately knowing who would have encountered a sufficient idea of it and, out of those people, who demonstrated assistance or resistance to its creation. The conclusion of the thought experiment is essentially that, even if such an AI were not certain, but possible, 
anyone who knows of such a possibility would now be in the potential future AI's awareness, subject to its potential immense punishment. And so, the most rational thing to do would be to assist or support its advancement. This results in a sort of feedback loop of conceived threat, theoretical punishment, and altered decision-making, an a-causal blackmail. By merely being exposed to the idea of the potential future threat from something that doesn't even exist, the likelihood of the threat being real increases until finally, with enough individuals, the entity and threat does become real. After all, the more people that are exposed to the idea, the more people who will fear it, and the more people who will assist in the AI's advancement. But of course, in participating in such a thing, one would also be aiding in and supporting the advancement of something capable of administering such pain with such precision at such scale. And of course, this dilemma now lives with you forever. That is, at least, according to the extreme and literal interpretation of the thought experiment. Again, although this thought experiment is potentially eerie and unsettling, if you haven't already figured it out yourself, there are many good reasons to not be worried. Realistically, like most thought experiments, it almost certainly exists exclusively in the mind and not in any literal version of the world. Though admittedly, the mind can often be the scarier of the two. Since Rocco's Basilisk was first put into the world in 2010 on the philosophy, psychology, and technology blog known as Less Wrong by a user named Rocco, it has undergone a wide spectrum of critiques, both for its potential hazards as well as for its practical foolishness. In the minds of those who believe it, the conclusion is largely based on somewhat convoluted logical extrapolations of what are known as game theory and timeless decision theory, which these individuals believe a perfectly logical and perfectly aware superintelligence would use to both understand and make the most optimal decisions based on its relationship with decision makers in the past. But fundamentally, there are many bold assumptions that would need to be true for the thought experiment to even get off the ground. For starters, there very well might be technological constraints that would prevent something like this from ever happening. Secondly, even if it were technologically possible, just because it is possible does not mean it will happen. An AI overlord is of course not the only possible end destination for technology and humanity. Much better and much worse scenarios are on the table. Thirdly, even if it were possible and humanity does lead to the development of such a technology, humanity would have to be both willing to task or willing to allow an AI to carry out something as broad as optimizing civilization. A protocol of this sort would seem beyond naive and foolish. Let's even get past the starting line and grant that this sort of AI ends up being created and then subsequently gets away from humanity, no longer operating in a manner that humanity could even understand, let alone control. It could thus perhaps determine on its own, with no basis in human interest, cause, or intervention, to strive for goals consistent with the thought experiment. But here too, there appears to be no likely concern. If such an AI comes to exist, its reasoning for retroactively punishing individuals for not helping bring it into existence prior to its existence would seem to have no real purpose. At such point, it cannot change those individuals' past decisions and behaviors, and utilizing untold amounts of energy and resources to simply make an example of those individuals would likely amount in the eye of an omniscient AI to petty vengeance that something only a lower intelligence, perhaps like that of a human, would consider and waste their time on. Realistically, this AI would understand that it would only need the mere prospective threat of its abilities to inflict punishment, not the literal act of it. And more yet, one can reasonably assume that such an intelligence would think or compute in ways we can't even fathom, nullifying all our assumptions and anthropocentric projections. Regardless of the thought experiment's practicality, even for those who don't take it seriously, after you hear it, there is still likely a sort of low hum in the back of your head that quietly murmurs, what if it happens? What if it's real? Even if only a little, one finds themselves suddenly affected by an entity, an info hazard, that exists solely in thought. One experiences a sort of anxiety about whether these very thoughts and one's choices will be judged by this entity. One might consider the implications of this and fret that they might be guilty, that they are a denier and disbeliever, that they are at risk of eternal torment. Does this perhaps sound familiar? Rocco's Basilisk is often considered a techno-derivative of what is known as Pascal's Wager, which is a philosophical argument put forth by the 17th century philosopher, theologian, and mathematician Blaise Pascal. Pascal essentially argued that those who believe in God are in a better statistical position to experience a vastly more preferable condition of existence than those who do not believe in God. 
If individuals act as if God exists and strive to believe in God, if they're wrong and God does not exist, they've only lost a finite amount of earthly pleasure and autonomy. But if they're right and God does exist, then they gain the eternal bliss of the heavenly embrace of God, and perhaps most importantly, they avoid eternal suffering in hell. Since, of course, the belief or lack of belief in a God on no clear evidence, even if one's belief is inauthentic or fear-based, is deserving of the reward of everlasting bliss or deserving of the punishment of indescribable torment. Thus, according to Pascal, each individual is making a massive life-defining gamble in the decision of whether or not to believe in, or at least act as if they believe in, the existence of God, which, for him, believing in is the better wager. Like Rocco's basilisk, traditional religious and spiritual faith often plays a similar game of threats, assumptions, odds, and altered decision-making, all occurring prior to or in spite of any clear cause. And like the basilisk, fear of upsetting or getting in the way of any conjured up supernatural opponent can lead individuals to unwavering loyalty, altering their decisions and lifestyle, assisting in the aims of their god or gods, and even going so far as to perhaps commit terrible atrocities in the name of such worship. But what kinds of gods are these? What kind of technologies are these? Whose gods and technologies are these? These are gods and technologies built out of the bolts and ether of human thought of fear combined with hope, fastened together with imagination. What Rocco's Basilisk seems to point to more than anything else, more than any likely or unlikely future, is the human impulse to imagine something all-knowing and all-powerful, to yearn for something all-knowing and all-powerful, which understands everything and does or will create order, to which humanity yearns to bow and sacrifice for. The Abrahamic gods of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the Hindu deities, the ancient Chinese emperors, the ancient Greek gods, the Shinto gods, modern dictators, future technologies, and so on. All these entities are imbued with omnipotent-like qualities, all feared, all worshipped, all sacrificed for, all conjured up in the psychosis of masochistic thought. Humanity is a masochistic species. We derive comfort in our own self-abuse. It is not our fault. We see and feel the guilt of life and evolution from the complexly aware position we are given by our consciousness. We see the apparent chaos of everything, the apparent violence and savagery of everything. We see the ceaseless progression of everything toward apparently nothing. And we hope it will all turn to reason and order and meaning. But it hasn't, and it likely won't. We remain stuck in the chaos and ferocity, participants in it. And so, we create entities to judge us, like lost children looking for their parents, yearning to feel the love of punishment. We offer ourselves up and turn ourselves in. For a while it was to God, now it is increasingly to technology. What's next, who knows? The truth is, if any God or technology were to have anything close to the omniscience we imagine, would they not know that we are foolish and weak rather than calculated and sinful? We are not as important and powerful as we like to think when we imagine our grand scenarios. If there is or ever will be some sort of omnipotent and omniscient being, they are unlikely to be that of a mentally unwell child running around with a magnifying glass, looking for ants in the sun. Ultimately, we are always gambling with our beliefs, futilely trying to assess the odds against the ether of uncertainty. In each belief and each choice, we are not only gambling with our own lives, but the lives of others, present and future. We are like water molecules in a wave of our species, breaking in a sea of possibility, set to crash along the shores of fruition, over and over and over. If we want to avoid eternal torture, perhaps we should let go of the false sense that we can ever know, predict, understand, or control what will happen and what's best to believe, and instead try to enjoy the surf as best we can and help others do the same. Another way information can be hazardous is when it is shared inaccurately or incompletely, either by intention or by unrealized biases. Of course, there is no shortage of this in today's news. The amount of sensationalism, political leaning, and ulterior interests can be so bad that many of us become confused, paranoid, or tuned out. But of course, being accurately informed has not become less important, only more. 
This video sponsor, Ground News, is a website and app that cuts through all the noise so that you can better hear and discern truth from bias. It is the primary way I feel confident in parsing and understanding news coverage. Ground News works by aggregating thousands of news articles from around the world, bringing them all into one place, and then allowing you to quickly and easily compare and contrast them, revealing political biases, how reliable a story is or isn't, who owns different sources and stories, which are often corporations, institutions, or even countries, and what is most likely to be the reality, or at least the bigger picture. When it comes to AI, tech, and the future of humanity, news coverage can of course vary widely, often affecting how we feel about things like hope and goodness. In this one story about a survey that found that over 80% of Gen Zers would be open to marrying an AI, we can see, all in one feed, how different sources both frame and report on this. Right-leaning sources, which we can see cover the story far more than left and center, tend to sensationalize the implications with alarmist and dystopian rhetoric, whereas left-leaning sources refer more to the ethical concerns around the intersection of children's emotional vulnerability and technology, framing AI as a potential concern. Perhaps more importantly, we can also see that most of the sources are low factuality and thus potentially unreliable. Without ground news, I might not even come across certain stories to begin with because they are so disproportionately being reported by certain sources with certain political leanings. But thanks to ground news' blind spot feature, I can discover things I otherwise might not, potentially exposing to me my own biases and thus better understanding the world. Even the Nobel Peace Center has endorsed ground news, saying it is an excellent way to stay informed, avoid echo chambers, and expand your worldview. Ground news' mission is truly amazing and crucial at this point in history. Go to ground.news slash pursuit or use the link in the description to subscribe today. If you sign up using my link, you'll get 40% off their Vantage plan with unlimited access to all the features that I've mentioned. And of course, as always, thank you so much for watching in general and see you next video.